Welcome back, mother lovers, to a brand new episode of Last Call at McLaren's, the best damn how I met your mother podcast on the internet. I am your host, Josh, here with my best bud, John. How you doing, man? I am doing excellent this morning. I did not piss my pants. <laughs> but did you remember to wash your hands? Check. Boom. There it is, folks. <laughs> so, yeah, we are here yet again to talk some how I met your mother Oh, today man, I this was gonna be our clone high podcast sorry man it's just you know makeover makeover the official home clone uh, clone high podcast has not been made yet but we will do Say it soon. What? <laughs> we should do that it would be fun <laughs> but we are here for season two episode 11 how lily stole christmas that's fucking right john grinch. fucking grinch this episode aired december 11th of 2006 it's an old one, but a good one. Directed by Pamela Fryman, of course. Uh, we're coming up on some ev- a couple of episodes soon that are not directed by Pamela Fryman. So I am shocked. Keep an eye out, uh, an ear out, an eye out of something out for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> written by Brenda Hisua, whose name I probably am butchering every time I've said this. Uh, this is her fourth episode out of five total. She has one more coming up next season, uh, which is Doris the Tripla. It's a good one. Ooh, do I say triple? Yeah. Uh, she also did uh, last season, Slutty Pumpkin. Yeah. Ooh. That was a good episode. It is a good episode. All right. So the summary for this episode, a rift forms between Lily and Ted after they find an old answering machine message where Ted badmouths Lily after she left Marshall. That's right. That's all it says. doesn't give... So, any other detail about anything I'm, else happening in this episode? I'm going to start playing a new game. Okay. You're, you're going to read the <laughs> synopsis from wherever you get your synopsis from. And I'm going to make a better one sentence synopsis that just summarizes the entire episode. Okay, let's hear it. Ted screws Christmas. I like it. I like it. Ted screws Christmas. That's the very first one starting here at episode 11. <laughs> I'm going to summarize each one down to one sentence after you read it. I like it. Ted Starting screws Christmas. Ted screws Christmas. I feel like a lot of it's going to be Ted screws something up. <laughs> <laughs> Ted screws honey. Yeah. Oh, honey. Oh, honey. All right. So let's get into it. Future Ted starts off the episode talking about uh, what his plans should be for Christmas. He says he could spend it with his mom and her new boyfriend, Clint. We finally get to see Clint for the first time here. I, uh, I gotta say, I love Clint as a character, by the way. Yeah. Like, I know a lot of people were, like, really annoyed anytime he was on screen, but he is fucking hilarious. He is, man. I remember him from, uh, he played, I think he played the mayor on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, my God. Yeah. I never put the two together. Yeah. And so anytime I see him, I'm like, Oh shit! Yeah, it just yeah. makes me think of that. But it's such a different character. But uh, I mean, yeah. it really is. And that's probably why I never put the two together. Yeah. But that's oh my god! It's it's mind blowing, right? And the drag. <laughs> uh, so uh, the other options uh, that he had was uh, spending it with his dad and his new girlfriend, micro brewing. Yeah. Which we don't see the girlfriend. It's just a uh, we just see a picture of his dad no, no, no. with a beer. He doesn't say girlfriend. He says uh, his girlfriend, micro brewing. Oh, see, I didn't take it that way. I thought I thought it was like his dad and his new girlfriend, nope. and then they would be micro brewing. No, nope. his oh. girlfriend is micro brewing. I never, I just didn't take it that way, huh? Yeah, that changes that whole little tiny bit. Yeah, for me now, and makes more sense as to why all we see is his dad yeah. and the beer in the. Picture. It's because his new relationship <laughs> is the micro brewing. Okay. Well, thank you for that little piece of tidbit, uh, that that knowledgeable, that wise interpretation. I mean, uh, it's, it's it, here's the box, <laughs> and here's me outside the box. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. I got you, bro. That's true. You are out. That's why out. this is a two-man podcast. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, his other option is to spend it with his cousin Stacy and her family, who are super religious, uh, but he decides... He's going to opt for none of those. He's going to stay home, spend Christmas in Manhattan with his friends. Uh, Now, this is actually not the first time 
that we've heard about Stacy. No. We heard about her back in the episode uh, titled Brunch. Ted makes a comment that she is like a ride at a water park due to her, you know, intense fertility uh, because she has six kids and she is pregnant again. Holy shit. Right now. Well, we only see four of them at the table. Is there? Yeah, there is four at the table. Yeah, but she has apparently, I'm assuming they're babies. They're probably sleeping Mm, in a crib somewhere. But yeah, she has six kids with a seventh on the way. Damn. Because I think all of them are in the picture, the initial picture at the beginning. Oh, you might be right. I didn't actually think about that, though. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah. Um, And also, uh, in this opening scene that we get uh, with Ted, he's wearing a purple T-shirt. He is. Which I thought was a nice little like, hey, yeah, bad stuff's about to happen here, Ted. (laughs) (laughs) You screwing Christmas, Ted. What are you doing, man? Uh, So at the apartment, Lily has completely decked out the place with Christmas decorations. Marshall comes out of his room. His eyes are closed. He doesn't want to see anything. No, he's he's got a paper to write. He does. He is super excited about Christmas and doesn't want any of it spoiled. He like trips over nothing, hits the reindeer, and then he's yeah. like, because I thought this was funny. He's like, is that Rudolph? I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know. Part of me wondered if that was like an ad lib or if that was part of the, like in the script or not, just because of the oh, way he, he does it. Bucks. Fucking Jason Segel ad lib that. There's like he, no way that line. Like he right. accidentally knocked it over and he's like fumbling around still in character. <laughs> is, that a, is that a reindeer? I don't want to know. Out the door. No. I love that how was... he's like all about the cookies and stuff too. There better be 20 cookies and 20. don't clean the bowl. Yeah, which I love that because it comes back at the end. Yes. The the bowl thing. It's like it's just a, it seems like just like a a funny throwaway line, but they they bring that shit right back around. Well, I, I thought about this though cuz they show it during the episode and I know I'm jumping way ahead. <laughs> That's okay. The gir- cookies get like set on fire. Yes. So like he I, I, home. I have notes about that, but yeah, we'll get into that also. So he, that means he comes home to everything being like peachy keen, but no fucking cookies. I mean, All unless, he got unless was she scrap. made more, I don't know. There, there's no way she had enough time to set everything back up and make probably it. not. But I mean, she the fact that she was able to have everything set up, remove it, set it up at her place, remove it, set it back up in all that time. True. I, I mean, who knows? Maybe she could have. Uh, <laughs> maybe if she started the cookies before she started setting stuff up, I don't know. But maybe. Whatever. Like I said, I got some. I got some comments about the cookies later on. <laughs> uh, so after he, because like you said, he uh, he has a paper to write, so he's going to the law library. Yep. To to do this, he's going to be out of the apartment. So after he leaves, Lily comes walking back into the living room. She was out out uh, of the room. Um, I don't know where exactly she was because around that corner, is I know is the bathroom, but I don't know if we know of anything else that's over there. I'm going to assume there's maybe like a storage <clears throat> closet over there. Yeah, I just don't think they ever really no. had ventured to that. I honestly don't remember. Uh, if anybody out there does remember, let us know <laughs> at last call H I M Y M on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, she comes out with uh, an old answering machine, uh, plugs it in. And uh, there's a message. There's some messages on there. So she decides yeah. that uh, they're going to listen to these messages. They're going to listen to some messages from like who knows when. Yeah. The first one is from Ted's dad, who's apparently going fishing with his friend Clint. Yeah. And I love how Lily turns the, uh, <laughs> to Ted and he's like, yes, same Clint. Yeah. Same Clint. But we do learn later on, or was it? It might have actually been in the brunch episode. I don't remember if that's when they first talk about Clint or not. Um, but I know at some point we learn, like, he talks about how he was Clint's friend. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't remember if it was and in that, that episode. He yeah, set them up. Yeah. yeah. So, like, we learn at some point that he <laughs> set them up. So, it's 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 kind of, it's it's really funny to me. Uh, so that, that whole relationship, the Ted's parents and everything, it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> they are they are a couple of characters. They definitely they, are. To say the least. Uh, but the second one happens to be from Ted. Uh, and they're listening to it. And apparently, Ted doesn't apparently remember because he's listening to it, not like freaking out that about what's coming. Yeah. He and obviously has no too, idea. Like, 
he's like just standing there, and I'm like, <laughs> as soon as I would have heard the message, and he's like, hey, Marshall, still sitting on the couch thinking about Lily, I'd probably hit the button because nothing good is coming from that. Yeah, you just unplug it, chuck it out the window. Like, you don't want to know. I don't want to ruin Christmas. <laughs> I mean, even if he did forget what he recorded, you're asking if Marshall's forgot like over Lily yet. Like, there's clearly going to be nothing good that comes from that message. That's true. That's true. So uh, fucking save face, like you said, throw the fucking thing. Yeah, trip and fall. Oops. <laughs> Oops, my <laughs> bad. Uh, but yeah, he uh, he calls her a bad word, uh, and future Ted censors this bad word. With the word Grinch. Grinch. Um, now, we've talked off air, and we even talked a little bit, bit about this on our very first Last Call After Hours. We did yeah. talk a little bit about uh, our thoughts on uh, what this word actually is. Uh, and I know you said that you're 95% sure, and I'm 100%. Like, I, don't, I don't believe it's any other word than cunt. Oh, I, I really don't. hundred percent agree. I don't at this point that it. because I've I've definitely <laughs> done some research into it since then, and there's a there's this entire like dedication to this on Reddit. Yeah, where people were talking about this, and they were talking about how that too. when Ted says the word bitch, he usually substitute uh, substitutes it with beach. Yeah, and there would have been no reason to have not done the same thing in this episode. Yeah, and they've said that word because like you know, so you son of a bitch, you know. So like they've used mm-hmm. that word. So there's, I saw, I saw a speculative post where it's like, well, it could be the word whore because that's a pretty bad word too. And they, I don't think they would ever say that on that. Like they, I don't think they can say that on network television, at least not then. Um, maybe they could, but I don't think I so. Don't know, though. I don't think that he would go with whore. I don't think so either. And like, I don't know, maybe it's me. Maybe it's just the way that the choice of word Grinch and cunt are just like the they, they hit the same. You they know? do. The only reason I originally thought it was bitch is because bitch and Grinch kind of yeah. rhyme. Yeah. And then I was like, no. I was like, because I don't think Lily would have reacted to being called a bitch that way. No. So it definitely had to be stronger, and that's why I did the research. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take your side of this, and I'm gonna assume he called her a cunt. Yeah. Which. I- I don't care how pissed off you are at somebody. That is definitely a low blow. Oh yeah, it really is. Now, like I'll say, I'll, I, I'll be honest. I've used that word when I'm like cursing somebody out to myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, that, well, it's, it's different when you're cussing somebody out to yourself, but <laughs> yeah. I like it when I get in somebody's face and I'm just like, <laughs> Oh Yes. Uh, for all the, uh, those out there who no, don't no, know, no, 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 hold on. For, for all those out there who don't know uh, what that sign is, you're gonna have to figure it out on your own. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> tune in to Last Call at McLaren's <laughs> season two, episode 11. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I think, I think, I think that's exactly what it is, and uh, she's not happy. I mean, <laughs> Oh no! I and then if somebody called me that either. That's true. And then Ted, they, the the camera goes with Ted. He's just like, "Oh fudge," which I thought was hilarious because it's a it's a reference to a Christmas story. A Christmas story, yep. Which and I, I thought didn't say fudge, and I didn't say fudge. I I thought that was a, a great little piece for those for those of you who have not seen that movie. It's a it's a great little Christmas movie. First I, off, I, if I really you haven't seen it. a fucking Christmas story, you get your fucking ass off your couch. You go down to a video store if there is still <laughs> one, or you find that shit streaming somewhere because this is twenty twenty two, and you watch that not once but twice, and you be careful because you'll shoot your fucking eye out, kid. I was gonna say a video store. Those things exist still. <laughs> I don't know, but I realized I said video store after I said it. And was like, oh shit, yeah, no. kids. Video stores <laughs> are physical buildings where you would go to rent a video. Oh, preferably on a hey. Friday night with your parents. You would get something they tried to talk you out of, like probably a good slasher film, and then be scared shitless for two hours. Dude, so, you know, okay, so Blockbuster is like, that was like the biggest one, right? Hell yeah. And then, like, not that long ago, you know, we had family, family video, video around. Did you know Family Video was out was around in the eighties? No, 
I was watching Stranger Things, which is set in the 80s, and they go to a family video. No shit. Yeah. Rumor has it that not if you watch that. Turning Red just right there is a Tim Hortons in the background. I, yeah, I saw I saw somebody post about that. I, I was like, it. what? I was like, I just watched that. I did not see that. It makes sense. I mean, it's it's 2002 in Canada, in Toronto specifically. Oh, then no, mean, that definitely makes sense. It makes sense, of course. Yeah. I don't think I caught that they were supposed to be in Toronto. Yeah. Oh yeah. That may no, then that doesn't shock me at all. Yeah. For I mean, some yeah, reason, I there's thought a big the Canadian flag in one scene. Yeah, because that means they're in Canada. <laughs> I mean, I would hope so. Otherwise, that's his. I'm gonna go put a Canadian flag outside of my house right now, motherfucker. Okay, do it. You won't do it. <laughs> You're right. You, because I you could own. celebrate Robin Sparkles. Just saying. Oh, Canada. Oh, duh. Oh, Canada. Uh, anyways, uh, so Ted and Lily, they uh, they have it out. about. Oh, this God, do they have it out. And he tries to deny it at first that he even said it, but it's like. <laughs> that that could have been. He's, I like how he's like, that was Barney. She's like, no, it wasn't. Uh, it was Marshall. Marshall sent a message <laughs> to himself. Maybe. <laughs> like, Come on, Ted, just man up and. and apologize like i don't know why he didn't like i don't understand why he's so like i understand he's mad but like apologize and then explain right you know what i mean I, and like, that's it this comes back to communication just yeah. like we've discussed now on like three different episodes oh, i'm sure this we'll discuss been on solved. many more <laughs> oh absolutely this could have just been solved with a simple like you said i'm sorry but you didn't just walk out of that whole little speech he gives at the end if that would have been like cut there, pasted here with an "I'm sorry," it would have fixed everything immediately. As long as he's legitimately apologizing, because uh, we <laughs> we we find out later that that Lily uh, knows his fake apologies. I'm gonna say though, the scene when they're in her apartment, and he's like Grinch, 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 Grinch. <laughs> that scene fucking kills me. It does because. It, it takes me. Remember the um, the wedding bride episode when Barney's in the theater. He's like, oh, "Kiss yeah. him, kiss him," and we know he's not chanting "kiss yeah. him." Yes. <laughs> All I can think of is is that scene here, and he's like, "Grinch, Grinch, 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 Grinch," and it's like, <clears throat> and he's like, "Oh," and Lily's yeah. like, "Great, now you're pissed off the big guy upstairs." Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> good stuff there. Uh, which we'll get to more uh, as we... I know, I'm along. jumping ahead. <laughs> uh, so then we get a flashback of Ted putting his foot down during Marshall's depression state, you know. He's making him uh, come up with one bad thing about Lily. And this kind of spirals into the guys that's kind of railing on her uh, <laughs> to one another. Barney calls her a laugh slut. Uh, Ted makes fun of her for, for laughing at Weekend at Bernie's too. Among yeah. other things, I thought she was, was funny. watching Weekend at Bernie's, but she was watching Weekend at Bernie's too, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, because that's a that's a big improvement. <laughs> oh, uh, I thought I thought that was pretty pretty funny though. Uh, and then we get back to, to the apartment, uh, and Ted says that it's the be- it's you know it's a best friend's job essentially to to console their friend, even if it means using that word. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I can neither confirm or deny that because <laughs> I may have done similar shit in your situation. Fair. That's very fair. <laughs> you always got, got my back, though, so that's what I, that's what I mean, listen, not to air your dirty laundry out here on the podcast, but when someone goes and does the stuff that she did, I will never say it to her face. I will never say it to your child, but she was a total Grinch rag. Fair. <laughs> I'm just saying, and if she's listening to this podcast, which I highly doubt, then take your Grinch rag and shove it straight up your ass. See, we didn't have to censor the word ass. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Whoo! And this is the kind of quality content you get right here on Last Call. I don't know why people tune in to listen to us. <clears throat> I mean, 
I hope that we make them laugh as much as we make ourselves laugh. So somewhere, somebody just spit took their water. <laughs> Hopefully, you did not destroy a computer or something. Just saying. True. Uh, so then uh, they're at the bar. Ted is is talking to Robin and Barney about what happened. Uh, Barney even tricks Ted into saying the word out yeah. loud as a woman yeah. walks by, which I thought was hilarious. She looks at him all disgusted, <laughs> like too. She's like, <laughs> I love that Ted's just like. Okay, I'll say it. And he just like blurts it out. No qualms about it. Just boom, right there. I'm like, okay. Uh, like maybe, maybe at least lower your voice a little bit if you're right. in a public place. I'm just saying, Ted. Think so, about so it. So here's the thing that really makes me laugh about this though. Robin doesn't take offense to the <laughs> word. No. She doesn't like she's a and I mean, like, don't get me wrong, she's not a feminist by any means. But she's very vocal in being treated with respect, at least. Yeah. I would have figured she would have had problems with at least the word. I feel like, I, I'll be honest, I feel like she's used this word. Fair. You know what I you mean? Know what? No, I can totally see that. I feel like maybe that's why. Like, she's totally in her mind thinking, yeah, I'd probably call her the same thing. I mean, <laughs> at least in this instance, she defends Zoe. Because also, I don't. She left her too, high yeah. and dry. Yeah, and she's just not a, like not as vocal about it. Um, I think they kind of made up before you know, earlier, but still, like I wouldn't doubt that in her mind she's like, yeah, I thought the same thing. I mean, I just didn't to, say it. Yeah, I mean, you have to assume that because I mean, you're 100 percent correct. It's not like she just walked out on Marshall; mm -hmm. she walked out on the whole group. Yeah, and and again, we talked about this during the one episode. I don't remember exactly which one, but like Barney acts like he's not even like phased by any of this. But oh, we yeah. know because of a later episode, it's because of Barney she came back. Yeah. So I mean, it really shows that like Barney cares, and like he might play the tough guy with the hard exterior and like the whatever, but like he cares. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he doesn't want to let people know that, but yeah, he definitely does. Yeah. Uh, then we learned that Ted never actually apologized to Lily and yeah. instead doubled down uh, and said and just kept saying, yeah, she was being a Grinch back then. Uh, it's like, come on, Ted. And that's <clears throat> like that's like that whole, oh, honey, kind of situation. Like, like really? I you're like just gonna, you're going to lean into worse, it? Though, because, yeah, I mean, yeah. like he does. He leans in. It's like when you hit a sheet of ice. You don't fucking turn into that shit. Take your foot <laughs> off the gas and, you know, let yourself slow down a little bit. Yeah. Nah, man. He just hit that gas. Metal. Pedal to the metal. You know, metal right to down to the pedal. Yeah. Right down to the floor. Right down to ah. the floor. Metal to the pedal. That's right, folks. You heard it here first. <laughs> oh, uh, so Barney then interrupts, uh, calling Ted by supposedly his full name. Except he does get the middle name wrong, which I thought was funny. Well, we've never funny. heard. We have exactly. not exactly up to this point. We've never heard his name. So like he says, Ted Vivian Mosby, and to to us, it's just like, oh, that's that's funny. He's calling him a girl's name. Okay, it's funny. But then we learn later on that his middle name is Evelyn. So it's pretty Evelyn. goddamn close. I think it's really funny too because like that comes back later on. Oh, yeah. uh, I think it's during the the bro episode where. Barney's trying to get them to like take the bro code or the bro oath. Mm, and he's like, it. Ted Evelyn Mosby. And he's like, Ted, why did I ever tell you my middle name? Mosby. <laughs> yeah. I love that. It comes back. <laughs> uh, but, and then Barney says, uh, I love this. He says, do you kiss your mother with that mouth? <laughs> yes. And Ted responds with, you said that word too. And then Barney comes back with, I don't kiss your mother with my mouth yet. Yes. But according to everything that we learn uh, throughout the show, by this point, he would have already kissed Ted's mom. Because it happens shortly after the brunch episode. You are correct. So here's my question. Do you think this is an error in the writing, like a continuity error? Or do you think that Barney is just lying because he doesn't want to give away give that away yet, and that he's almost like teasing Ted with it? What about a third option? What's your third option? It never actually happened. 
I think it did just because of the way uh, Barney, because he starts off say essentially saying that he banged his mom, and it kind of whittles down. True that they that they kiss. Then, then maybe he just didn't want to tell him yet because it it's definitely a continuity error either way. Yeah, but I'm gonna assume that it was supposed to be there, but like they just hadn't developed that yet. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I'm gonna go with uh, inside the show at least that Barney is is almost well, teasing Ted with this fact. I I haven't kissed your mother with my mouth yet. Like he's almost telling him that it, that it's happened, but not. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's just that's that's what I'm choosing to go with for my own sanity. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he's uh macking it with Teddy's mom, Teddy Westside, Teddy Teddy Westside. Uh, who we also uh, this is where we kind of real you do kind of hear it before this if you're paying attention. But this is where we realize that Barney is sick. Yeah, uh, even though he does not want to admit it, because you can tell he sounds like it in that whole, throughout that whole scene. You know, if you're paying attention, you can hear that. Oh yeah, you can hear he the sound normal. Yeah, uh, and. <laughs> He goes to the bar to try to pick up a woman and sneezes right in her fucking face. Right in her face. And she walks away. <laughs> he's like, uh, an excuse me would have been nice. No, a bless, a bless you would have been or nice. Or a bless you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, goodness. Ah, uh, that was. <laughs> Man, if that would have been 2021, that would have been a COVID nightmare. That's right. Uh, his entire, in this whole episode, the the like physical humor from neil patrick harris is fantastic um, i have to say it kills me when he's in bed trying to eat the soup yeah yeah that is great. what gets me in his deliverance but like the next scene uh that we get here is the three of them going over or going back to the apartment yes ted's got like the beer and everything um and barney sneezes himself into the wall <laughs> yeah. so hard that he falls I'm just like, holy shit, Neil Patrick Harris is selling the shit out of this. I am honestly surprised, though, since we're talking about the next scene already, that Ted got out of the bar with a glass of beer and no one stopped him. I mean, that seems to be a thing. I mean, we talked about this on, I think it was the last episode of How I Met Your Father, where Sophie just walks out with a beer in her hand. Yeah, but I mean, at least that's Sid's bar. That was slightly different. I mean, that's true, but she still walked out with an open beer. I think it's actually easier to do it here because he walks out and just goes right upstairs. That's true. So I feel like it's easier to get away with. Um, it's, it's just the fact that he stole the mug. <laughs> true. That's, that's the real thing is like, at least in How I Met Your Father, that was like Jesse's beer. Like it wasn't yeah, from, yeah. It, was, it was in a bottle. But this one, the, he, he legit steals a mug. And what bar fills a beer to the literal yeah, brim? To the literal top. Like it is like flat to the top. Like <laughs> I don't know any bar that's doing that. But I mean, hey, maybe uh maybe maybe, maybe Carl, Carl walked really away. Maybe, maybe Carl walked away and Ted just went back there and topped it off, <laughs> topped himself off a little bit. I yeah. can see that. Yeah. Uh but so they walk in and they see that Lily is not there and she has taken all of the decorations all of the decorations except for like one little ornament ball that's on the fleshy that's With sitting on the tinsel. floor yeah that's tinsel tinsel on the floor uh so then we get this bit where ted tries to use voice dial to call lily <laughs> and winds up calling somebody named billy and they talk for like 20 minutes about parent I, i'm assuming like about their lives and stuff something something happened in billy's life uh we don't actually know and they wind up making dinner plans. But you never hear of Billy again. That's right. Because they probably fucking killed himself. And I'm honest with you, John, after that phone call, I wouldn't be surprised. So <laughs> the one holidays time. are tough on everyone, Billy. <laughs> um, so have you ever wow. had... Way to make him sound unimportant. Well, Billy, your job isn't important. You don't matter. Everybody else has problems, too. I mean, that's what... I mean, it's pretty much what Ted says. Yeah, yeah. yeah really say, you know the, the holidays are tough on everyone. That's what he says to him. Um, have you ever had? I'm not saying like the you know the depression call, but like have you ever like accidentally called somebody and then like wound up staying on the phone, like <laughs> not wanting to hang up and just like talking with them for a while? Yeah, yeah. 
that's fantastic. The, the one time I tried to call my mom and I ended up on the phone with fucking I don't remember who I ended up on the phone with, but I was like, oh yeah, no, I gotta go. I'm trying to call my oh 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 yeah uh huh uh. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, good stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know how that one works. You can put the phone down. People don't know what you're missing. I mean, I I got people in my life who are definitely like that. Yeah, like who I can set the phone down, go take a leak, come back, they haven't missed a beat. Haven't missed a beat. <clears throat> yeah. So, and I've done that many times. <laughs> I doubt that person is watching this podcast. Oh, I, you, I would not. But you never know. Uh, so then, <laughs> while they're in the apartment. Robin catches Barney smoking a cigar out on the fire yeah. escape. One of the few times that we actually get like something out on the fire escape, even though it's not shot from outside, it's shot from inside. Um, because they don't yeah, they don't typically hang out on the fire escape. But it's a well done shot though, too, because if you notice, like they committed, even though you really can't see it, there's snow on the the windowsill. Yeah. So like he's been out there for a good few minutes. The snow has blown in the window. Yeah. And Robin's all like, Barney, what are you doing? He's like, blame Marshall and Lily and there are no smoking in the apartment rule. Yeah. Like, first <laughs> off, dude, you have set the apartment on fire twice. But he wasn't smoking. Doesn't matter. It's fire related. <laughs> I wouldn't let him have fire in my apartment either. Because uh, that I mean, really technically. Oh! Technically, he didn't have fire when he set the apartment on fire. It just appeared. Oh, yeah. Appeared. <laughs> it's called it magic, John. <laughs> Magician's code. That's right. Magician's code. Uh, so she she says uh, that he needs to go home and go to bed. And this is where we get a classic Barney quote. Whenever I start feeling sick, I just stop being sick. And be awesome instead. And be awesome. True story. And I think this is hilarious because it's an altered version of his quote from the season two premiere. Yes. Where he, where he says, whenever I start feeling sad, I just stop being sad and be awesome instead. Yep. True story. So I thought that was cool that he reused that line. Because it's 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 a great Barney line. It is a great Barney line. Yeah. Modified for any occasion. Yeah, man. Anything. If you just stick a new word in there, boom. You know, uh, when I, whenever I'm feeling horny, I just stop being horny and be awesome instead. True story. See, you can, you can put it anything. <laughs> yeah, except Barney Simpson would still be horny and do something that's, about it. That's true. He would be. That is very true. You could do anything. Hungry? You could be <laughs> hungry. Uh, I, I don't know. Sleepy? Sure. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Dopey? I'm just gonna start naming uh, uh, dwarves and seven dwarves. When I feel Doc, <laughs> I just stop being Doc. Be awesome instead. <laughs> uh, so he says he's gonna pound a six or a Red Bull and go play some laser tag. Uh, but instead, he passes out on the co- on the couch mid legendary. It's like legend. Wait for it. And uh, I thought it was pretty funny because we've seen him. Pound a sixer of Red Bull. Oh yeah, in the Cougar episode. Yep. You know, like he's got. Like, he didn't yeah. even take him off the ring, and he's like, no, because he I thought that it. was fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. So I love that they that they brought that back. That reference. Uh, just little things like that are what I love about the writing in this show. True. You know, it's good stuff. I love though that is Ted leaves the apartment because this is where Ted leaves to go after Lily. Well, no, because he he finally gets her on the phone first. Oh, you're right. He does yeah. get her on the phone first. Yeah, he, he finally gets her on the phone. And this is where we learn that she took all the decorations back to her apartment and has set them up there and is refusing to bring them back. And this is absolutely an example of Aldrin justice. Yes, it absolutely is. A, it's absolutely Aldrin justice. Which I, I love that they they don't have to say it. No. We just have to know it. It, it was too early for it to be Alder and Justice because we hadn't seen that. Oh, no, we had seen Yeah, that. we did. We just yeah, thought we recently. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It still is what it is. Yeah. But, but they don't have to say it. It's for the, it's like, we already know that's a thing. It's a part true. of her. And so if you don't pick up on it, that's one thing. But it's there for those of us who do. Well, the thing that makes me laugh is not only is it Alder and Justice, she acts like a five-year-old because she'll be like, she's like, yeah, because you're bringing ass hat. Ass hat. 
And I'm like, well, okay, yeah. sure. Here's my question, though, John. How? Okay, so we know that Marshall went to the law library. Did he walk there? Because how the fuck did she get all these decorations there? Well, he had to have walked because he ends up in the back of the. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true with the with the with the truck. So I'm, I have to assume then that she took his the Fiero. Fiero. Yeah. Have we have we heard about the Fiero yet? Not at all. By, we haven't really heard about it or seen it. But like, do we, we know do that, we know uh, that Marshall has a car? Yeah, because remember the Philadelphia episode. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Philly. Philly. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I have to assume that she piled all this stuff into his little car. Oh, no, we do know it's a Fiero because she, um, when she calls Ted to go change the tire. Yes, there you go. Um, so we do know it's a Fiero, but we don't know that it's a piece of shit yet. The, yeah. So it's like she had to, like, cram an entire Christmas tree and a whole shitload of other stuff in this car and drive it over to the Bronx. So I'm just like. I'm um, just saying, man. Okay, man. It was hey. Christmas in that car. Yeah, it was definitely something. Um, and then she calls him back to remind him of the cookies, to take the cookies out of the oven. 20 minutes. And this is what I have to say. She put those cookies in. I have to assume it's been a while because they, they were in when Marshall was there. Now, unless this is just a new batch, which I guess it could be, but still, I don't, I I've never made whatever her cookies are, but the cookies that I make only take like eight minutes. So like when the fuck did she put them in? She had to pack the car, drive all the way to the Bronx. <laughs> Ted had to get home. Like she had, she had time to set up all the decorations in her apartment and the cookies are still cooking. Like what are these cookies, man? <laughs> Son of bitches. They are some, some bitches. And uh, they must take they take a while to cook. My thought process is these these are early versions of what a some bitch will be further referred to as because yeah. they are cinnamon cookies. Yeah, I just don't, I'm just like I it, it confuses me as to the length of time that they're being cooked. Yeah, because well, I mean, she literally says take them out in 20 minutes, and that's longer than any cookie. Yeah, take makes. them out in 20 minutes, which is like. How long have they already been in there? Exactly. It's like, are you baking a loaf of banana bread that takes an hour to cook? Like, what the fuck are these cookies? Yeah, I thought about that, too. This is the one episode that, like, I've watched it now on a, a couple of occasions because of delays and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, um, okay. So yeah. we're taking bricks out? We're giving bricks <laughs> away? Luckily, yeah. we don't have to find out. <laughs> that is true. It's like giving somebody a fucking fruit, uh, fruit, uh, yeah, you know, fruitcake, fruitcake. Thank you. You're welcome. Fuck you. Every year. No, my year <laughs> no. to give you one. Is it? Yeah, you I got wonder, me one last year. I remember there was one year I had one sitting in a drawer that I had forgotten to give you, <laughs> and like, and like M May came around, and I opened up the drawer, and I was like, oh shit, there's still a fruitcake in here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know, Josh and I have a weird Christmas tradition of uh, every year we switch who gives who it, but one of us buys the other a fruit cake that never gets yep. eaten. Except for one year, I bought a tasty cake brand one, and your mom ate it. Yeah, that was weird because apparently it was really good. I was like, okay, apparently. cool, rock on. Glad I bought <laughs> a tasty cake one. I guess uh, I don't know. Usually, I just buy the. She first cheapest one I can find. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, usually we don't even spend much money on them. We go to like Dollar General, that like the dollar twenty five one. Yeah, just the cheapest little fruit cake you can find. I think this year I'm gonna make you one from scratch. Oh shit! I might have to try it just on principle then. Just saying. I'll put an extra uh, ingredient in there. Um, maybe I won't try then. <laughs> I'll have somebody it, else try it. It'll either be Viagra or Xlax, but I'll have somebody else try it first. <laughs> <laughs> you're um, like, you're like, they're not shitting themselves. It must be Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you. It was only half ass Xlax. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is, folks. <laughs> uh, so Ted decides he's gonna go over to Lily's place. Like you said, he he finally leaves. Yeah, when he uh, does, Barney wakes up and he's like, "Dairy." Yeah, I thought that was great. <laughs> Dairy. Uh, I just uh, wanted to throw that in there. 
Continue. Yeah, it was it was uh, perfectly timed. Uh, Perfect. And a nice little little joke. It's funny because like if you're not really if you're just kind of casually watching it, you may have forgotten that when he fell asleep, he was in the middle of that. Yeah. So that when it does come back, it's like, oh shit, that's funny. It is look. funny. Look at the size of that pancake. It's so <laughs> that's funny. so funny. So funny. Uh, so he heads over to Lily's, uh, and Ted gets a call from an excited Marshall who wants to know about the decorations. Uh, and then he asks about the cookies, and Ted realizes that he forgot to take them out. And we get one of my favorite little, like, tiny scenes in this whole episode. Like Robin with the fire extinguisher? Just screaming, just spraying the oven with the fire extinguisher. It is hilarious. I laughed so hard every time I watched so, it. So, see, you you squeal about that. Can we talk about, though, for the second that for, like, one minute, Marshall's actually at the college. Because yeah. he's in a hallway. Yeah. And he's like, is Rudolph there? Hi, Rudolph! <laughs> and I'm like, you sound like a total fucking weirdo in the middle of this hallway. That's true. <laughs> uh, but it's it's reasons like that that I love Marshall so much. He is fair. He's such a funny dude. But yeah, Robin just screaming, cookies are burned. <laughs> um, I don't know how, because like, was Robin there? And we didn't know? Yeah, she stays like, at the apartment with Barney. No, no, but I mean like, Oh yeah, she, that's right. She 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 did, didn't she? Because yeah. she nurses yeah. Barney in Ted's that's bed. Right. Yeah. Um. And so just like <laughs> I'm one because like we don't see smoke, so I'm wondering how bad it it got before she had realized what was happening. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> was it just billowing smoke? Was she like, what is that smell? And opened up the thing, and, and they, <laughs> they they must have been on fire. She's using the fire extinguisher. Right? They like. They must have been on fire. And like, has it been, it's really been more, has it been a half an hour? Because she well, says, they, take them out in 20 minutes. Yeah. But again, though, go back to everything we've been saying about baking cookies. Yeah. I guarantee you, it was probably a line, it was a throwaway line that was meant for people who know baking. And they were like, she's like, take them out in 20 minutes. And people are like, oh, uh, no. <laughs> like, plus the amount of time they've already been in there like you said yeah. cross that with ted time yeah. ted left and that's why they were literally on fire <laughs> they weren't that's a bricks. penis <laughs> that's a penis they were not bricks anymore they were they were they turned oh, into God, charcoal, yeah. Yeah, they were and charcoal. Lit, and lit on fire uh so yeah <laughs> we didn't start the fire no we did not <laughs> it was lily's cookies so then uh, Ted gets a call from his mom, Virginia, oh, yeah. who is very upset and is like, Theodore Evelyn Mosby. Uh, <laughs> she is not happy that he used uh, that word. No. Uh, because Lily ratted him out. Which also a very Lily thing to do. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. And then I'll, we. I'll, oh, no, I go ahead. I don't care how old you get. How pissed off you get at somebody? That is still the most classic, like, go to. I'm going to tell your mom. I'm going to tell your mom. I can't tell you how many times I have been in a fight <laughs> with my own siblings and been like, do not make me call your mother. Because <laughs> you know firsthand how this is going to play out. <sighs> That's always a fun go to. It's always fun. Uh, we then meet Clint. Uh, they actually meet him for the first time. For the first time. He gets on the phone to talk to Ted. And Ted just winds up hanging up on him, which I thought was hilarious. Can't blame him. <laughs> uh, you know, every time I see Clint, I just, I want him to start talking about the dragon. I just <laughs> can't, I can't think or like look at Clint without that in my mind. I was going to say, I usually go right to that song. It's the yeah. first thing I go to. Or like, uh... <laughs> The episode in season nine, like I think it was a, I think it was more than one episode, but uh, where he's in the car with Marshall and yes. uh, and with Daphne, I think her name yeah. was, uh, and they leave him on the side of the road and shit like that. That's the oh, other thing that pops man. into my head. When I see her trembling bosom, fucking Clint, and the dragon, <laughs> and the dragon. And me. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> Guys, Robin totally cried at Clint's song. <laughs> uh, so uh, back at the apartment, Robin has made some soup. This is the scene that you were referencing Dude, a little earlier. I so I love this episode because, like, she sits down and she's like, <laughs> like she Barney's complaining about like how he's not in his suit anymore. He's in Ted's pajamas, even though he's comfortable, and he admits that. Yeah. And then Robin's like, "Well, I made you soup," and Barney's like, "I'm too weak." <laughs> and she's like, <sighs> so she takes the spoonful and she's like, "Here you go," and he's like. Ah, ouchie in my mouth <laughs> and I'm like right there I would have been like no I'm fucking done I'm gonna punch you in the face and walk away but instead she says something and Barney's like don't leave well yeah because he's like he's like he's like because he wants ice cream she's like you're yeah. not gonna get ice cream he's like I hate you and then she is she's like yep. I'm done I'm out of here and that's when he's like don't leave me don't leave me <laughs> Oh fuck, man! It's just so. Again, it goes back to that whole NPH really commits to this. Yeah, uh, dude, and he it's does. just ouchie in my mouth. <laughs> Next time I eat soup, I don't give a fuck where I am. I could be at family dinner. I could be at fucking Olive Garden. You best bet the first spoonful of soup I fucking eat, I am screaming ouchie in my mouth. <laughs> I hope it's, I'm there for that. I really hope I'm there for that. It's just like you and I have a tradition of when we go to the movies. What do I say every <laughs> fucking time to the first trailer? Fucking lame. Fucking lame. <laughs> fucking lame. Doesn't it's matter a, what it is. Doesn't matter. It could be the greatest trailer ever. I'm like, fucking lame. <laughs> oh, man. Uh yeah. I miss that. We got to go to the movie sometime soon. We do. Uh, so, Ted Hopefully finally... they're not serving soup at the theater. <laughs> Man, if I ever went to the theater and they were serving soup, I don't know. I might turn around and leave. Because that's a little weird. <laughs> Just saying. It's a little <coughs> weird, guys. But it's not weird for Subway to sell soup? No, man. Soup and sandwich. Totally not weird. Okay, then we're going to Olive Garden. Soup, salad, breadsticks. We went from Subway to Olive Garden. All right, let's do this. Ouchie in my mouth! <laughs> I'll just And I'll just be like doing like a, a walrus with two breadsticks. Oh, oh. Bro, you better be putting breadsticks in your pockets. They want you to take the rolls. It's true. They do. A hundred percent. I mean, I don't know if my pockets are big enough. Maybe they are to fit a whole breadstick. They might. You better fucking carry a purse for the day. <laughs> Like, here's my messenger bag. <laughs> There's nothing in my messenger bag. Don't look in my messenger bag, please. Dude, line it with cardboard <laughs> to make it look like your fucking computer's in there. There it is. God Plus, damn, man. it'll save uh, the messenger bag from the grease and the butter Boom. and whatever else is on that. <laughs> and the dragon. And the dragon. The dragon is definitely on that uh, thing there. Uh, so Ted oh. finally, finally arrives at Lily's apartment. It's completely crammed with decorations. Oh, so crammed. He can't even barely open the door. He has to like roll over her bed to get over to where she is, which is after claiming hilarious. to be the pizza guy, though. Yeah, yeah. And she and she believed it. Well, I like her line though. She's like, Well, I knew it was you. I just thought you'd brought a pizza. <laughs> She's like, Well, yeah. I didn't bring a pizza, but I brought a uh, uh, a beer. Uh, beer. But, a homeless homeless... I took it. but I gave it to a homeless guy. Well, actually, he took it from me, <laughs> which I thought that was I was like, oh, that's too funny. I wish we could have seen that. that it made me wonder if it was Milton. There, Yeah, maybe the one that's that, that's the one he gives a dollar to, right? Yeah, it's the one he gives the dollar to when uh, they try to get the pie charts and stuff back from. Our yeah, yeah, that would actually be pretty funny if it was. I thought so. Okay. Uh, so he tries to get her to come back. Lily refuses to come home. Uh, Ted gives uh, his fake apology that, that she <laughs> went through. Uh, and then he reveals that he's upset because she never apologized to him yep. for leaving to go to San Francisco. He felt yep. betrayed by his friend. Because she was being a Grinch. Grinch, 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 Grinch. Yep. And then the oh. power goes off. Oh, great. You pissed off the big guy upstairs. Oh, yeah, Lily. I'm sure Jesus shut off your electricity. 
<laughs> use that language again, and I'll shut off your water. <laughs> and you know who that voice is, right? No. Wayne Knight, a.k.a. <laughs> Newman. Newman. Yeah, Hello, man. Newman. I love that this show gets fairly decently big named uh, like comedians to do random voices. Like yep. we just recently had Megan Mullally as Barney's mom. Yeah. As the voice of Barney's mom. Now we got Wayne Knight as the <laughs> voice of Lily. We never see either of them. No. You know what I mean? So it's like, huh? Okay. So I love just kind of picking up on, on the voices there. Um, yeah. Wayne freaking <laughs> night, man. Oh man. They say, I'll shut off your water. Yeah, and then Ted's like, oh, she's like, my super lives upstairs. <laughs> and now she has to celebrate Christmas in the dark. No, nah, she goes back to Marshall's. Yeah. Well, Ted, it's because Ted gives up. He's like, you know what? Fine. You can have the apartment. Go celebrate Christmas. I'm going to go and have Christmas with my cousin Stacy in Staten Island. Staten Island. They, apparently, they don't believe in gifts uh, or Christmas trees. And they think that Santa is how Satan spells his name when he wants to trick people. Yep. <laughs> and this this is where I had noticed, and I brought this up in a previous episode, that one of Stacy's kids is played by the kid. Well, who you haven't, he hasn't gone there yet. Oh, you're right. Yeah, he hasn't gone there yet. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll get there. Uh, first, we go back to uh, uh, to to the apartment. Robin reveals that she has oh, yeah. Barney's tea with some codeine. To knock him mm-hmm. out, which fun fact you can get low dose codeine over the counter in Canada. What? Yeah, that's the thing. So I'm assuming that's how she just randomly has codeine. I that mean, she can spike his tea with. I'm just going to say it like this, bro. They're in New York City. I you mean, don't got to go far down a city block to score <laughs> anything in New York City. I mean, you're probably right, but I just, I mean, I don't see Robin being a, like a, like a pill popper and I don't see her just like going out specifically to find some codeine. I think she just had some Canadian codeine. I mean, maybe she did. I'm not, I'm not arguing that one bit. I'm just saying just like, though, you, you go to the store, you buy a bottle of, uh, of Tylenol or whatever. She goes and buys a bottle of codeine. I mean, you don't know what she does on the weekends. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Maybe she, uh, she codeines it up. On the weekends. She walks it out on the weekends. I mean, she works with guys like Sportman Kirk. She works with Don. Don. She works with Sandy Rivers. Sandy. I mean, she needs fucking fucking drugs to get through her shifts. Yeah, I mean, especially with Sandy. Fucking Patrice. (laughs) Nobody asked you, Patrice. Uh, So uh, Marshall finally comes home and sees, you know, the decorated apartment. He's happy about all that. Lily's there and he has a gift for her. But first, he has a story to tell. Which is, it's an okay story, but like, <clears throat> we get it. You got yeah. her a present. Well, here's what I, th- I thought was funny. So Marshall, you know, he, he goes to the delivery place. It's supposed to be kind of like a UPS type of a place. Um, and he finds out that the, the his gift has already been loaded onto a truck and is, is headed, headed On its way headed to pick And he chases it down. Do you consider this the first instance of Marshall versus the machine that we know of? Yes. Cause like, I wondered if, if, if this would be considered the first or if maybe the, uh, the, the, the episode with the limo might've been. Cause like he wasn't technically like chasing the limo, but he ran all the way to the limo. So he I, does, but I don't, I don't count that one as much because okay. the limo stops moving at one point. Okay. Yeah, because it was it was parked now, when he comes running out. Granted, the delivery truck doesn't drive far, <laughs> but, but it does start moving and it's and she, going over. She says it left like five minutes ago. Yeah. So like he had to book it to I think I would assume to catch up. Marshall so, yeah. versus the machine. Yeah, so this is like our first like instance of uh, of Marshall versus the machine, which I thought was pretty Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. And he learns that the driver won't be able to deliver all the packages. So Marshall helps him uh, to do this so that everyone can get their uh, stuff before Christmas. And I had a couple of side notes here uh, with this scene. Side note number one, the guy who plays the driver is uh, Marcus Fulmar. And I uh, was checking out his IMDb and noticed I it, it's random. 
uh, it has nothing to do with the episode, but I noticed that in 10 different projects, he has played either a police officer or a security guard. I just huh. thought that was interesting. I don't know. He has played a, a delivery driver a couple of times as well, but I just thought I was like, I kept seeing like police officer delivery or a uh, security guard just over and over again. I was like, huh, interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, and my second side note was they played the song backdoor Santa during this scene. And I don't know if I've just never thought about it, but that song is fucking dirty, dude. <laughs> Have you ever listened to like to nope, but I bet the you I will once we get off the air? Like I looked up the lyrics because I was like, because like just like I was like backdoor Santa. That sounds like like a sex type of thing, you know? Just like because I it just like I thought about it as I was listening to. It. I was like, huh? Never really thought about it that way. And so I looked up the lyrics. I was like, oh, it is <laughs> all right. And apparently, on the DVD release, they took this song out. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. What song did they use in its place? I don't know. I didn't. I watched it on on Hulu. I was reading in the on the wiki that apparently I, I have the DVD. I have. I should go back uh, and ch- if I had if I had saw that before because I I literally saw that right before we started recording. Uh, I would have probably gone back in and checked it on the DVD. So I, I have no idea. But uh, I tell you this, I will probably go back after. Uh, and uh, maybe have a little extra tidbit on the next episode <laughs> yeah. to, to uh, a little previously on, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was a interesting little side note. Yeah, good. Definitely go and check out those lyrics at some point. I will have to. I was like, oh, okay. I'll pair that up with my backdoor lover. There you go. Yeah, backdoor, backdoor lover. lover, backdoor Santa. <laughs> There's also an Urban Dictionary uh, uh, entry for backdoor santa for what that would mean oh well, i recommend checking that out as well i, <laughs> I will go on a backdoor santa thing when we get off it will it will make you laugh uh get off that's a nice <laughs> pun not intended hey, you know like that but yeah, sure exactly. uh <laughs> he then gives lily her gift and it's an old school easy bake oven and it's the exact kind that she wanted as a kid but she never told Marshall about this, John. So how would he know that? Because Ted he told Marshall when they were stoned in college one time. Well, Ted told Marshall at the bar. Lily oh, yeah. Told Lily Ted told Ted at the bar. Yeah. yeah. When they were stoned in college. And he remembered all those years later, even after being you, you know what though? Be what it is about being the stone side of it. That's the kind of guy Ted Mosby is, though. Ted that Mosby is, is the is. guy that you mentioned something like that because that's the kind of guy I am. You think it's going to be some like fucking throwaway line of like? And I ask people all the time. It's one of my favorite things. What is one thing you wanted as a kid for Christmas that yeah. you never got? And there are times where you know what? It's it's behind me. So give me a second. Because I can actually, like, bring this into... Uh... No, I can't reach it. <laughs> so, what was one thing I always told you? I I played with as a kid, but didn't own my own. But you know for a fact, I recently bought my kid for Christmas a couple years ago. Yeah, the Ghostbusters uh, set, the pack. And the, the 84 Kenner Proton <laughs> set for my kid. Came with a little armband. I made him his own uh, Ghostbusters um, ID badge. But, I mean, I literally spent a hundred and some dollars on this toy that is 30-some years old. It's in decent condition. I did a couple of small repairs to it to make it usable but for a kid. <laughs> but yeah. let me tell you, I am the kind of friend who will go above and beyond for gifts as long as I've got the money. Because that's what I like to do for my peeps. Yeah, same here. I love I love buying other people gifts. Yes. You know, I don't know. It's I always find that to be satisfying. Yeah. You know. Uh, and so, you know, Lily is, is she's, she's beside kind of, herself. T- dude. Yeah. She's taken back by this. She's like, wow, he, he remembered that and, and, and made this happen for, for me. You know, it's, ah, it's, it's <laughs> also side note before I forget, Ted makes a pretty damn funny joke while he's high. And he's like, easy bake oven. That's what <laughs> I'm going to call my van. 
Oh yes. Uh, yeah, I had that in my notes. I was like, oh wait, I gotta, I gotta remember to, I gotta remember to say that. But uh, wonder if he would park his van bomb by the river. He might. Uh, and Marshall really high walks in. Uh, they ask him about a concert that he was apparently gonna go to. He and couldn't he, find the outside. I couldn't find the outside. I like, laughed so hard. You won. Oh my god. Um, and this is one of only three times, uh, according to the wiki, that they refer to uh, it as weed or pot and not sandwiches. Yeah. It's because uh, it's before the, the joke starts. Yeah, the first one was in the slutty pumpkin. And then the next one is in the next episode, first time in New York. Yes. Where Marshall says something about pot in that episode. Because um, I just watched that one uh, just the other day. And so, uh, yeah, only three times. But then uh, sandwiches galore. Te- future Ted decides, you know what? I guess I'll start. I guess I'll start uh, censoring this part as well. Right? <laughs> Can't have myself looking like a druggie with all the sandwiches I've ate. I've eaten so many sandwiches, kids. I was so full. Uh, yeah. So like I said, Lily is shocked that Ted remembers that. Uh, and then when Marshall asks where Ted is, she tells him that he's in Staten Island and we flash over to Ted and he is now at uh, his cousin Stacy's place and he's talking to her kids and says he got them some presents and the boy rats him out instantly. Yeah. He's like, uncle Ted got us presents and Stacy's like, well, we'll just give them the charity. And she's, and her daughter's like, Ooh, yay. And she's like, not you charity. Uh, the, the the less fortunate, yeah, the charity for the less fortunate. Uh, and you can go ahead, John. What did you learn? What did you notice well, here? I just thought it was really funny because the kid who plays her son yeah. comes back as Ted's future son. No, Barney or Barney's future son. Barney's and fake. Then, yeah, son. Barney's yeah. fake son. Uh, Grant. Yeah, Grant slash Tyler. Tyler, Tyler no, no likey. Likey. You're, You're not, not getting a catchphrase. Not getting a catchphrase, kid. Freaking Grant. I hate that kid. I hate him in both of these roles. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, kid. You, play a, you play a good douche. I'm wondering if they used him in this one, and they were like, oh, he did such a good job. Nobody will ever notice him reappearing. Probably. I feel like that ha- ha- happened a lot in like older sitcoms, especially. Yeah. You know, you, they would just reuse actors, whatever. <sighs> People don't remember shit. Uh, I mean, but, Grant Tyler is a very forgettable role. Yeah. Like, it's such a quick appearance for him in that episode where, like, he doesn't get much screen time in either episode. And if you think about it, back back then, shows, like, the, the idea of binge-watching shows wasn't really a thing. That is true. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't think they were ever worried, like, oh, yeah, you know, People are going to binge watch How I Met Your Mother over and over again, and, they, and they'll notice this. No, they, I don't think they ever thought that. At least not you know, right away. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, and so as they're about to say grace, the doorbell rings, and it's the gang. Well, I think it's funny that they want Ted to say grace. Yeah. Well, Why even did on... you just say your favorite scripture? <laughs> that one like... from, I like where he's like, that one that Samuel L. Jackson says in Pulp Fiction is pretty cool. <laughs> I love that reference. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they, 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 don't, 25, they don't know what he's talking about. They're all like, "I think Stacy might," because she gives him like a look. Yeah, so, like, I think she might know at least somewhat. Like she might know what Pulp Fiction is. I doubt she's ever seen it though. Ooh. I will. I will say this. Recently, and I know this is getting off on a weird tangent. <laughs> recently, Lizzie wanted us to do this TikTok about if you were to catch. Your uh your siblings spouse cheating, yeah. okay. So we all did it, and I was originally going to do the line from Pulp Fiction. I was going to do the Ezekiel twenty five seventeen, but then I realized the build up line to that was even funnier, where he's got him there and he's like, "I'm going to ask you a series of questions," and the guy keeps saying like, "What?" and he's like, "Say what one more time, and I will fucking shoot you." And then the guy's like, he says something. He's like, "What?" He's like, "Boom!" and he's and I'm just like, that is so much more terrifying. Like, <laughs> why would the gun in your face just be like, say what one more time? <laughs> one more time. Uh, yeah, uh, and one more time, Ted says it's carolers. 
yep. at the door. Yep. <laughs> uh, and Marshall and Barney uh, start singing. I think Robin does for like a, a little bit of it. Well, they each um, take like a part of it and come in at like a different spot, which is yeah. it's sweet. And then Ted and Lily have their makeup moment. Yep. You know, uh, Lily even admits, you know, she was kind of a Grinch. And this is when Ted's nephew hears her and is like, what's a Grinch? What's a Grinch? <laughs> oh, that's just a word you, do, you don't say. <laughs> Mommy, what's a Grinch? <laughs> Grinch, yeah. Grinch, 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 Grinch. And every time I see it, I chant cunt every time. Huh. Every time, huh. even when I rewatched uh, it right before we started recording, I was like, "Cunt, cunt, cunt," because it's just imagining those kids just saying that while their parents are just like freaking the fuck out. Yeah, it's hilarious to me. Yeah. So Ted and the gang leave, uh, and the episode ends with Marshall sitting down at home with a bowl of leftover cookie dough, and he just dives in with his hands like an animal. Oh yeah, just like not doesn't even use a spoon, just yeah. Which I think, I mean, I guess I technically it could be the dough, the batter from like the burnt cookies. But part of me wonders if she just made another batch of cookies, and this is the, the the batter from that. I don't know. Um, I feel I like no matter what, he would eat it. Yeah. Yeah. He would he would eat it no matter what. And you're you're 100 correct. It's like I maybe maybe he's like I didn't get cookie, so I'm gonna sit down and eat this cookie to a bowl. <laughs> but he told us he said that he wanted her to save the the, the bowl, like don't yep. clean out the bowl. And and I love that they gave us a little like they they followed up on that, so we got to see it. So, <laughs> so that is uh, all of season two, episode eleven. How Lily stole Christmas. John, uh, you got any final thoughts on the episode? This was a smurftastic episode. Like you do not get much better than this episode. Yeah, this is a great one. Um, and I, I love how like it's only like two episodes after Slap Bet, which is like one of the best episodes that yeah. they've done. And this is another like top tier. Yeah, this one's episode. definitely a banger. Yeah, like I forgot how much like I love this episode. Like and like it's a lot of the little things like the. Ouchie in my mouth, or the Grinch, 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 Grinch. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. you know, a lot of like the little one-liners are definitely what makes this episode so great. Yeah, and it was just a great watch, like overall. Yeah. Like this isn't one of those episodes that feels like it's like going and going. This is one of those episodes that you get through twenty-two minutes, and you're like, oh, it's over already. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's uh, a lot of stuff happening, and it just flies by though, and it's funny th- all the way through. Uh, all right, so that brings us to one of our favorite parts of the show, Barney's Blog. Oh, suit up, bitches. That's right, folks. It is time to dive into the mind of Barney. And if that scares you, well, it should. Mm-hmm. It should. <laughs> uh, so this entry is titled, Take Two Awesomes and Don't Call Me in the Morning. <laughs> It was uh, written on Tuesday, December 12th of 2006. And it says, I've never been sick a day in my life. How is that, you ask? Given my considerably communicable extracurricular activities. Answer, awesomeness. I combat the cold and flu season by injecting heavy doses of awesome into my bloodstream. Special power. NASA's run tests. Pass them all. Flying colors. Of course, not everyone shares my ability to fight infection through superior genetics, which is why I'm offering a few hints that can help you safely and naturally increase your BAC or blood awesome count as you encounter the seasonal symptoms. So the first symptom, sore throat. Says honey tea and a lozenge? That's JV. Slip on a 100% Italian silk tie instead. The pain is just your throat demanding an accessory. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, then for fever, if you uh, you may be tempted to put on a comfy pair of sweats and go to bed. Do not do this. First, no one reading this should own such a garment. <laughs> Second, sweats imply acceptance. You fight fire with fire. Suit up. Aches. Men don't ache. And that's, that's, that's the end of that one. Fair. It's just three simple words. 
men don't ache. Uh, chills. Studies have shown the best way to fight a cold is with body heat. If you've even glanced at this blog before, you're well enough equipped to target and acquire a choice cutlet to warm you up. Heh, <laughs> well equipped. Oh. And finally, cough. A cough is the sound of your lungs high-fiving. They're celebrating <laughs> your... Yeah, they're celebrating your awesomeness. Join in. Light a, light a Cuban. Pour a cocktail. And imagine a world without children. Now, see, that is the first thing he said, though, that made sense. <laughs> Pour a cocktail. <laughs> Pour a cocktail. Uh, alone or in combination, these remedies far surpass the prescriptions of yesteryear. Remember, over-the-counter is just something they left out of the Kama Sutra. Fair. Feel free to send me your own cold remedies. Sometimes laughter is the best medicine. Barney Stinson at Yahoo.com. Now, if you'll excuse me, Dr. Stinson has several lucky patients awaiting their physicals. Okay, so while we're talking about this, yeah, what is one of your off-the-wall cold remedies? Off the wall, cold remedies. Man, uh, do I have an off the wall one? Do you remember mine? I don't. The little bottles of Jack. Oh my God! Yeah, holy <laughs> shit, man. Do you, do you remember when we lived on Eagle Street and I sat on the front porch and I downed the entire bottle in like twenty minutes and got so fucking sick. I do. But I woke up feeling so much better the next morning. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I have any weird ones uh, because, like, I just take Theraflu and push through. That's really all it I is. Mean, now that I've gotten older, that's what I do. I, I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, you know, street remedies probably aren't so smart. <laughs> and they're a lot cheaper to go to Walmart. <laughs> I think, if anything, I just did the kind of, like, you know, the push through it with nothing. Fair. You know, you, know, you you'd You'd get up, you'd go to work, you'd fucking deal with it. Yep. That was like what you were, that's kind of what you were told to do, you know? Because yep. you can't afford to miss work, no. you know? Otherwise, no. you get fired, and that is not good. Um, but, yeah, other than that, I don't think I had any weird uh, any weird remedies. But, Fair. Yeah, so uh, if that's all we've got, John, uh, I think you should let everybody know where they can find you. Well, hop on <laughs> over to Twitter where I recently just uploaded a new episode of my blog, Simply Sane J1. That's where you'll find me. The podcast is called Simply Sane with J, this guy. Um, guy. You know, that's me. That's pretty much where you're going to find me is Twitter. Find me on Facebook if you want to. Uh, At some point, I've got a couple of other things up my sleeves that I'm not currently wearing, but take it away, Josh. You can find me on Twitter at JP Rayner. Wait, your brand marketing today, I just noticed. Okay. Look at your shirt. Oh. It says Joshua. Boom, suckers. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at JP Rayner. That's J P R A Y N O R, as well as right down here at Movie Blog Merc. That is the Twitter page for my site, Merc with a Movie Blog. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, you are on the Merc with a Movie Blog YouTube channel. So be sure to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, click that little bell. So that you always know when we drop a brand new video. If you're listening on podcast form, head on over to anchor.fm slash last call H I M Y M. Leave us a voice message. We'd love to hear from you. We love have, it. Uh, we've played a couple of them on the, uh, on the shows before, and we would love some more. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, uh, and you like what you're hearing, leave us a five-star review and write us a little message with it. And we will read that out, uh, on air as well, which we oh, have yeah. done several times and be sure to check us out on Twitter at last call H I M Y M. That's right. How I met your damn mother. Just leave <laughs> the damn out and you're there folks. You're there. Last well, call. You leave the damn out, then you're just going to flood shit. There it is. There it is. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I, I, try to be pretty active over there uh you know if you guys send me any sort of comments or messages i will respond uh so yeah definitely do that and listen and, uh, on the outside chance you're caught up with how i met your mother and how i met your father which don't forget to check out the how i met your father podcast mm-hmm. every friday every new friday. episodes drop up until the end of the season here uh tomorrow yeah tomorrow. Uh, which will be up friday yeah. uh so don't forget to check that out friday season uh season finale and then if you are bored and you have nothing else to do, please go back in the catalog. Josh has a lot of great videos on 
Marvel stuff. He's got trailer reviews. He yeah. he has content galore. Please, yep. people, go back and check out his work. This man needs a damn job. Thank you. Yeah, some of those trailer reviews include this man right here. <clears throat> they do, and I plan on actually trying to be a little bit more part of some of his trailer reviews if he'd have me. Absolutely. Um, I, I do have fun sitting here talking with him. Uh, it's the most I get to talk to him in the week, so... I'm and if you want to see more of the two of us bantering back and forth and you like wrestling, check out our podcast off yes. the ropes with John Please and go Josh. Check out off the ropes with John and Josh at off the ropes, JJ on all the social medias. If, so if you go back that. through some of the old episodes, we have some appearances from a couple of professional wrestlers, True. Uh, former professional wrestlers, indie stars. Uh, we apologize now for some of the older videos. They are kind of a history lesson and not as, modern as we're doing it now where we're we're more sporadic yeah we're now we talk about like news and like just topics and we dive into stuff whereas before yeah it was just like a history lesson which was fine at the time yeah but there's yeah. a reason why we stopped yeah we realized <laughs> what we were doing and we took a well, an extended break for a few years oh yeah a very long time but uh we came back and uh we're loving it loving it so uh yeah we're coming up on two years now yeah yeah, this this yeah. WrestleMania will be two years of that coming back since we came back. So yeah, be sure to check us out on all of that. Uh, I, I I'd love to hear from you guys, but uh, that's all I got for him, John. Uh, what do you got for him? Listen, guys, you don't have to go home, but you can't listen here. Catch you next time. <laughs>